We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! Fuck it! Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Eddie's Wall. We are live here at the Transworld Snowboarding Studios in Carlsbad, California, with our special guest today, UC Oxenden. UC, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, before we get started, we have two important things. Number one, we are live. So this isn't my interview. I'm not interviewing UC. You guys are. So you guys, you please, you know, send your questions. I have this special. Um, Apple computers uh, made this special computer for me. We just got it in. So as you can see, these graphics are pretty insane. So thank you, Apple computers. Um, and send your questions in. I can ask you to see the questions. So what do I know? You guys have the good questions. Um, and the best part about asking the questions, Mizu uh, bottles here. Uh, UC started this company. We're going to get into that later. But we are going to give away uh, two very high-end, awesome Mizu Times Transworld snowboarding bottles um, to the two best questions or comments of the episode. So uh, let's get started. Cool. Yusi, yeah. um, well, let me do a little introduction real quick. So Yusi Oxenden, I'm sure he doesn't need an introduction, but we have one of the longest snowboard careers. Actually, I should rephrase that. One of the longest legit snowboard careers ever in the history of snowboarding, I would say. Uh, one of the most successful, uh, filmed with every huge guy from, whether it's Mac Dog or Standard or uh, um, uh, who's, uh, Robot Food, unbelievable uh, filming career, but then also went out and did tons of contests, uh, multiple X Games medals, US Open. Um, so overall, just banger career. Um, but like every show, let's start from the beginning. Um, yeah, so I <clears throat> grew up in Finland, um, I was a little skate rat, um, and then that's, that's kind of how that involved into snowboarding. Uh, we don't have very big hills, and I was, obviously grew up in skiing, yep. um, and then uh, skating, we didn't have any indoor parks, so like, then you have to hang the skateboard for eight months, and it's you know, kind of yep. harsh, and then skiing is... Um, the local hill, um, it's like 150 vertical feet, so it's like, you know, like the bluff over here in Encinitas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so once you ski, you learn to turn, it's like, it gets kind of boring. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> snowboarding was kind of natural evolution um, to skateboarding. Um, and then, yeah, it was just like, it was just really fun experiment. Because at the time, it was like 88, and... Uh, we didn't really know what snowboarding was. Right. You know, it was right. kind of new. There was no media. And so it's just kind of like, oh, this is cool. This is like skateboarding bone snow. Right. And uh, until later, we kind of like, oh, there's that people actually do this. And there's like things, you right. know. So we're the first two couple of years was just really having fun with friends and just building your kickers or whatever. Like we kind of had our own little scene. And this was before parks, really? Oh yeah, there's yeah. we never had right. anything. Right. Like if you want it, you're like you build it. you're lucky to have a cat driver to like put a little pile and then you just get busy and yeah. build a little yeah. kicker. And what age was that when you discovered snowboarding? Um, so yeah, it was it was around ten. Okay, I got I got into it and uh, and so quite a few years I was we were just you know playing around in a local hill, um, and then there's one guy um, from from where I, who I was snowboarding with, he started competing. Um, and we were good buddies and, and, but that was for me was never anything I wanted to do. I didn't like competing, didn't want anything to do with it. <laughs> That's so funny. And then, uh, so my buddy started doing him and, and he was doing really well. Uh, and then I would just go to these, I would travel with him, I'd go to all the local contests and I would just kind of watch him and he would win some of the contests. And I'm like, oh man, like, Maybe I should try, and then next year I um, I started competing, and and that transition was really hard because we we never had a half pipe, and right. all the competitions were half pipe. Mm -hmm. So you know, going into straight from like, what is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think it was the first contest I did, and I think I ended up like ninth or something like that. And I was like, oh man, this is kind of cool. Like I never ridden half pipe before, and <laughs> I got in top ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, and then it, it just kind of kept rolling from there. Yeah. Um, and then the thing too, like, you know, I, I actually the, the so that was ninety six and already ninety seven. Um, it was Junior Worlds. So I got invited to that, and then 
um, I got second mm -hmm. in the half pipe junior world champions. And uh, Steve Astafin, who was my Lamar team manager, he came down to, it was actually in Finland, so he came down, um, the local distributor talked to him and said, hey, you should come and check out this local kid, and okay. he flew over. Um, I got second, and then I got a wild card to go to US Open a week later. And so it all happened super fast. Real fast. And then, yeah, so Steve took me to US Open, and I remember that trip, that was, I flew with him, I didn't, I didn't speak any English. <laughs> We flew to New York. And how old were you at this uh, time? 17. Wow. Uh, so I had no clue what I was getting myself into, but I just kind of went with the flow and um, did that. It was a really cool experience. Um, and then... Do you remember how you did in that US Open? Uh, honestly, I didn't do well. I was, right. I was so... St it was... I mean, there was like Terry and all yeah, these guys. Yeah. Like, what is going on here? <laughs> oh I was just God. riding my local hill the yeah. year before. Um, and then, uh, then Lamar was. I started kind of working with them. I came to Mount Hood that summer, did a photo shoot, um, and then '98 things kind of started rolling pretty quick. I got into Olympics, um, did that, and then after the Olympics, I came to, for for pipe for half pipe. Wow! Yeah, for the '98 Olympics. '98 in Nagano. Yeah. Wow! I don't think I ever knew that. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, that's a whole other story itself. But, um, yeah, so anyways, like my, my dream was always to do filming. Yeah. Contest was kind of like necessary step to, to get noticed. To get there, get yeah. sponsors, get, you know. Yeah. So once I, once I did the Olympics, after that, I was like, I, like, I never want to ride half pipe. Like, <laughs> that was never my thing. It was right. kind of like, yeah. I was like, now I just want to try to do a filming thing. Right. Um, and um, I got an opportunity to film with Standard a little bit. Yep. And so that was kind of like the intro year. I got in late because it was like late March. Yep. So I didn't get to spend a lot of time. It was more falling than landing. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to I want to talk about that before we get into that. Let's uh, let's get to some questions. If you're just tuning in, you're watching Eddie's Wall. We have UC Oxen in here. We're in the Transworld Snowboarding uh, Studios in Carlsbad, California, and we're live. Uh, the best questions and comments are going to uh, win. Uh, have a chance to win uh, two water bottles, Transworld, and Mizu, company that UC started, is doing really well. Let's get some questions going right here real quick. Um, Evan Francis Litzwas, Litzwas, yo, how's retired life treating you? Do you ride more or less now? Um, it's, it's really good, but um, I've been thinking about that a lot, and uh, it's, retired life is busier than I ever thought. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I'm obviously full-time with Mizu. Uh, really kind of put my mind into it and it's it's going really well but uh I think in a way too like the last five years in snowboarding it was I was really pushing hard like every ounce of like energy I had yep and then so once I decided to retire it was such a relief yeah so I kind of feel like I've almost like felt like I had to take some time off yep um, and then this year we did an awesome trip to Japan. It was just like kind of me and my partner Tim Pogue and Maisie. We just went and, and rode, and, and that was really cool. Um, but yeah, so I think I'm, I'm looking forward to like doing more specific trips. But yeah, yeah. awesome. A little bit less snowboarding, more more with my kids now. <laughs> cool. Uh, Emily, Joe, Miss Skiwitz, uh why can't anyone butter like you used to? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that, that's like, that was my era when I, when I grew up in snowboarding, just watching like Terry and Mike Rangut, like doing all the butters and I don't know what it was, but that to me was so cool. And maybe it was like a skatey kind of thing to do, yeah. but that always kind of, I, I don't know, it was just something that I always enjoyed. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I just kind of, kind of went with it. And, and I know there was a lot of like Peter Lyon was doing some rad stuff and, um, but yeah, it's just. I think it's just it was yeah was that in robot food when you when you started doing like the butters off the, the was it? yeah so robot food it kind of started like doing the uh and i started doing it in the back country and yeah then, yeah then the contest like i started doing the uh like a butter to like switch back nine or whatever yeah. like that yeah. was like <laughs> oh wait speaking speaking of switch back nine i have to say this because this was it was maybe I don't know if it was your second U.S. Open or or third or something, but I remember 
we never got like cable or anything at my uh-huh. house, but this one time somehow I got to see the US Open. Like I don't know if we went to like a little local restaurant or something and I remember, you know, of course I recognized like Peter Lyons name mm-hmm. and you know these guys and it was like Jason Borgstead and you know, but then it was funny because you dropped in and at that time like I had just assumed like a switchback 9 was just so gnarly. You know, uh, it, it still is a gnarly trick, mm-hmm. but I remember then, you know, a lot of people were doing backside and frontside and cab and switch backside was like, okay, you'd see switch back fives here and there. Switch back nine was unbelievable. So I remember seeing you do a switch back nine on the t- on TV or whatever. And I remember thinking I couldn't, your name might as well have been Japanese. <laughs> I was like, Jussie, Jussie Okasunon. Oh man, I'm getting a phone call here. What? Come on Blowing people. It. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, so you see, uh, I was like, oh, Jesse Oxenden. And, and I, I remember actually thinking, I need to remember that name. I was like, I am gonna focus on remembering that name because that's, this dude is obviously gonna be huge, you know? And I was like, that guy's amazing. So anyways. Yeah, that was, that was pretty funny because I, <clears throat> I skateboard Koofy and snowboard regular. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's crazy. So, and it's, a, I know, don't, Downing always calls me a cheater. A cheater? <laughs> But like switch backside, that was always way easier for me than backside, and right. so so I got lucky for yeah. for contest wise. Cause. Yeah, because yeah, switch backside. <laughs> um, okay, okay, more questions. They're stacking up. Thank you guys so much for writing in the questions. Let's do this. Um, we uh, said Emily's uh, Kelly Jorgensen, and I think we're gonna get into this question in more detail later. But she's wondering, how did you get Mizu off the ground, up and running, and uh, any advice for someone who is starting a new brand? That's a really yep. good question. Yeah, so Mizu started, it was it was really a <clears throat> passion project. Yep. Um, it was something that I was felt like something needed to be happen. Yep. Especially because I'm traveling here in the US, it was like seeing so many single use plastic water bottles. So I wanted to introduce a brand that can kind of speak more to the youth. Yep. Um, so we wanted to build a brand, but therefore it's it's cool, but it's like maybe youthful youth will be like, okay, that's cool. And then it makes sense, you know, it kind of has both ends. And yep. um, so it was really like, kind of what snowboarding was for me when I started, Mizu was the same thing. It's right. like, okay, this is, I want to do something more meaningful. Yep. And uh, the challenge was at the time when we started Mizu, it wasn't necessarily set up as a business so much. You know, it was more like, like hey, a homey we, project. We, we, we want to do this. Like, we want to yeah. convert as many friends out of single use plastic right. and get them used re- reusable. Um, so, but then it kind of like evolved naturally from there. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, that's obviously, that's been a huge challenge. It's just like taking that, that transforming from kind of like this garage project to legitimate brand. Right. Um, so we've been in business for eight years and, uh, and the biggest I had, I was very lucky cause I had some very good mentors. I think that's really important. Yep. Always rely on people who can help you. So, yep. you know, whatever you need, like you can go to somebody, it's like, Hey, like I have no clue what I'm doing here, but yep. can you help, help me? me out. Yeah. Um, so Chad helped me a lot from Nixon at their early age. He would kind of give me like a little do list. Mm-hmm. Like, Hey, here's like the next three months. Like, Hey, like ah, cool. check these and then we'll, then we'll look at it again. And, Whoa, cool. Um, and then finding finding right people to work with, um, being really able, um, lucky to be able to build a really solid team. Yep. Uh, my partner Tim Pogue, um, our CEO and president, he's uh, founder of Right Snowboards. Yep. Um, so he's you know, he's very experienced in business side of things. Yep. So just having that you know, knowledge and that you know, somebody pro running it, it's, yeah. it's really key, so. Cool. But then it's important to have that, the brand message too, and like that's kind of what my mission is, to really just kind of guide the brand and, yeah. you know, have that, have that passion and kind of core mission still, yeah. keeping it sane. Yeah, the, yeah. The, pa- yeah the, the reason that you started it. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's keep running through. We got, we're getting like bombarded with questions. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys, this is amazing. Um, again, if you are watching, best two questions are going to win these very high-end custom Mizu bottles times Transworld snowboarding logo on them. Pretty epic. Uh, let's see here. Anthony Harris, what trick uh, took you the longest to learn and uh, what was the feeling that you had when you landed it finally? Um, it must have been the, uh, all the double, double corks. 
Yeah. Which is, it, uh, how old were you when you were learning this? Because, uh, because <laughs> you probably like thirty. Yeah, you're. I figured yeah. you had to be at least thirty. Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't necessary um, how difficult it was, but it was just like a sort of a build up. Like it was something that you know you gotta do. do. Yeah. But it's like you didn't want to do it. Yeah. And yeah. It's like oh man, like I know I gotta do this. Right. And. Uh, and so this is kind of that build up. I think he was like, you know, two years. Like for me, it was like, okay, like, I, I'm gonna and then it's like, it. you know, trying to find the right jump and like, yep. which double is it gonna be? And, <laughs> and uh, so, and I remember we're, we're in Tahoe, we're filming and we, we built this jump and it was just perfectly set up. And I was like, okay, like I'm, I'm gonna go for it. And I did a first try, totally like, you know, got lost in the air, but I'm like, oh, like, I figured it out. Yeah. I'm like, okay, like, yeah. I need to do this. Yeah. And then I went again and, and landed it perfect. <laughs> right about, I'm like, what just happened? Oh, I had no idea God. what happened. And and it wasn't like I learned a trick by any means. Right. But it was just like, oh, I did like, it. I don't know what happened, but yeah. <laughs> I just landed <laughs> it. <laughs> so, uh, but I think, like, as far as that, I think it, it was, uh, <clears throat> you know, just the build up, that was... <clears throat> It's just like a kind of stressful yeah. process. Mental build up. <laughs> yeah. uh, Colby Sears, uh, what is your best memory from filming for Chulk Smack? Chulk Smack? Um, I think it was just the, yeah, that whole era is, is, was with the crew. Like we're like Heike, Villa, JP, myself. Like it was just a really rad crew, yeah. like friends. Just, and and it, it was kind of like a build up from Robot Food going to that. Like we almost like sort of continue that yeah. with that. Like we just bunch of friends deciding what we're gonna do, where we're gonna go. Yeah. And uh, and I think yeah that that's that was the year when we went to Austria and that kind of became our spot. Okay. And so we discovered a lot of really rad zones and some new jumps and and Europe was always fun. Yeah. Europe. Every skiing. Yeah. Every skiing. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Okay, Todd Coleman, if you could only pick one or two board graphics of all your pro models, which uh, one would be your favorite? Um, I think it's probably like uh, like me on that little mini bike. <laughs> What's that? I'm wheeling oh, the yeah. Lower, yeah. And it was kind of, that was like pretty, uh, at the time, it was just like, are we seriously going to do this? Like, <laughs> this is like, you know, pretty out there at the time. Yeah. Um, but you know, I I I, th I I just thought it was kind of funny, and it was it was it was cool. It was just totally different than what was out there at the time. Yeah. Um, so I think yeah, I think I cool. picked that. All right, there you go, the mini bike wheelie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, how many years were you on Burton? Um, almost fifteen years. Fifteen. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, okay, wait. Uh, Guthrie Gordon is a hot dog a sandwich. <laughs> Pretty random question. <laughs> I do sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, <laughs> Zoe Oxenen. Dad, please, can you bring home some chocolate chip ice cream tonight? Gabriel from Gabriel and Theo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's classic. All right. All right copy that. You're getting... <laughs> do list. <laughs> you're getting your uh, grocery list on, on Eddie's wall. That's awesome. Uh, all right. Uh, Jav Mill. Um, how do you feel when you see Stale stole your haircut? How do you, how do you feel when you see Stale stole I, your haircut? I think he's got more hair than me. I, I don't have any hair, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Shay Logsdon. What's your scariest snowmobile experience? Any, any crazy crashes or wrecks or anything? Or? I think, I think in general, like the last two years, it was like, scariest thing in general every day was snowmobiling it was just because we were going so much further deeper, and, deeper, and it was like yeah. we're doing like 60 70 miles a day and and like you cut in these huge hills and and it's just it's just, it's honestly like terrifying cause yeah if, if, if you break a big giant hill and it's just it's game over yeah so there's definitely times that and now with the sluts too like they're so powerful so you pretty much get up to anything. Yeah, there's and no excuses. Yeah, so like, you just like, seriously, we're doing <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah, in 99, like, you'd be like, <laughs> I would totally go there, yeah. but uh, my sled can't handle it, so we should turn around. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, we didn't have any particular moments. It was just like general, like it was getting pretty gnarly. Yep. 
but we saw a lot of a uh, lot of serious accidents. Yep. We saw snowmobilers, you know, die in the backcountry. A lot of it's like total Barney's again, like doing sleds, gnarly sleds, going yep. somewhere where they shouldn't go. Yep. But just like you're coming home and you're like, oh, like hear what happened. And you're like, oh, like this yeah. is like pretty heavy. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh. I remember one time we were sledding out. It might have been in Cook City or somewhere, but we were sledding and we pulled up to a bunch of sled necks uh, who were obviously beginners or something. And they're all sitting there and we're like, oh, hey, how's the snowpack? Like any avvies, anything sliding? And the, the dude uh, pulled out his transceiver and he's like, yeah, it's super good, man. Like hasn't nothing's gone off yet on my transceiver, so it's it's fine. And we were just like, oh my gosh, dude. Like, oh yeah. You know. Anyway, um, yeah. Okay, yeah. So um, Patrick Lee, what is your favorite video part that you've ever had or been involved with? By the way, Mac Dog for life. Is that are you, that's some like no, but yeah, Patrick Lee. What do you think? Uh, yeah, favorite video um, part. That's my a, favorite. That's it's probably Afterbang. Okay. Love of food and not necessarily like. Uh, the the quality of writing or or anything but it's just like that to me is is like a the best memories of my snowboarding filming yeah whole career um yeah it was just it was just so much fun it was just amazing and it's we just felt like it was this bunch of kids running loose yeah yeah <laughs> and i think it uh i think it kind of that whole video kind of breeds that too like it really kind of shows and captures like what such a what good time we had yeah you know? yeah what snowboarding is yeah. all about i think that's why they did so well i mean that it's still the robot food trilogy is you know everybody's always all all yeah. jazzed about it uh let's see um travis dogs where do you live now i live in carded by the sea it so about it's two miles uh, away now. <laughs> yeah it's like about eight miles south from here okay yeah, yeah. been here for uh 11 years now okay yeah Eleven years. Yeah. So you would just travel in the winter, obviously. Yeah. So I would uh, I would base base here, and then I would just travel yeah. uh, anywhere. In the last like six years, I would go to Canada probably like ten plus times. Yeah. So it was like commuting. Yeah, just commuting <laughs> a twenty four hour commute. Yeah. Or forty eight hour commute. Yeah. Uh, if you're just tuning in, you're watching Eddie's Wall here at Transworld Snowboarding Studios with special guest UC Oxenin, snowboarder phenomenon, and we are giving away two Mizu bottles uh, times Transworld Snowboarding uh, to the best questions and comments. So thank you guys so much for commenting in. Uh, let's just keep rolling with these questions. I had a bunch of questions for you, but the, you guys have way better questions, so let's keep doing this. Uh, Tim Armstead, favorite Northwest spot to shred? Mount Baker. Okay, and he said sure. skating and snowboarding. Skate, I honestly haven't skated there. Okay, no skating in the Northwest, uh, but Mount Baker? Mount Baker, yeah, I mean, that's like, just to me, like I've had my best snowboarding days in Mount Baker. Cool. Early season, just like so much snow, three feet every day, just shredding, yeah. like incredible. Love that place. All right, Shay Longs, Logsden, um, who is your favorite snowboarder to watch and who is your favorite snowboarder to ride with? That's a pretty cool, good question. Um, I mean, there's favorite snowboarders. There's a lot of them. That's a hard one. That's a hard one to nail down. <laughs> but uh, I think when I was growing up, there was, I mean, there was a few. Uh, Ingemar Bachmann was a huge. Uh, yeah. That was, and it was Ingemar, Peter Line, and Devin Walsh. I think that was like the, kind of like the, the, the top to. three inspiration. Um, yeah. Okay. And then what about Ride With? Like once you, or, um, you know, I for some reason it's like every time, like I ride with the with the fins. It's, uh, just, yeah. it's I don't know what it is, but it's yeah. something, something. It's just uh, maybe because it reminds you home. Yeah, but yeah. like with Yoni or Ika and yeah. Arrow and and all those guys, and it's just it's just fun. Yeah, fun well, crew. I mean, it's got to be pretty insane. I mean, you guys are from a very small country on the other side of the world. Real, I mean, not necessarily, but especially back then, the snowboarding industry is really based out of the USA. And I think to have, for you guys to come over here to a strange country, not speaking English, and end up having these big, prosperous careers, mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, I could see like riding together. It's probably yeah. this pretty cool thing. Like, hey, we, yeah. we now really it's... made it, you know? And it's, <clears throat> everybody does their own thing too. So Arrow's filming for this. And... Yeah. 
and Ico's doing this. So it's like when you get a chance to ride together, it's just it's it's rad. You can catch up and you know have fun and yeah, yeah it's it's cool. Uh, let's see, Brad Sarar. Uh, are you sick of Aaron Leland's blue emo filters that he uses? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like it. I, I think it's cool. Like, I think, I mean, I don't say he's probably the, the first guys, but just, he was like, who kind of like created this, like a look, you know? Yeah. Consistency. And I, 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 I think it's kind of cool to have that. Like yeah. that's, you know, that's Leland trademark, you know? There you go. Yeah. Okay. That's Will, D it. Will Diaz Velariu. Uh, <laughs> Uh, hi, have you had any near-death injuries uh, during your professional career, and how uh, did it change your mentality and discipline during your recovery? Um, yeah, so I've had a few, few close calls. Um, the last was probably the last day of my whole snowboarding career. Right. It was when we were um, up in Whistler filming, and uh, we already had really incredible four days helling. Um, and the last day was like, okay, like we still have one day, weather was coming in, like everything was kind of like, we we're tired, kind of over, yeah. weather wasn't there, snow was not so good. Um, and then we, we went up and uh, we we're like, okay, let's take some warm up runs. And, and something was weird that day. Like I remember just jumping off the heli and I was like, I don't know, like I just yeah. don't feel good about it. Yeah. Um, and I picked kind of like a mellow run um, started riding. There was kind of like this convex roller at the top, and usually, like if there's an avalanche, it's it's at the top. Yeah. And I kind of like put a turn there, and nothing yeah. went. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like I'm just gonna cruise through. And then as I'm like halfway through the line, all of a sudden, I just the whole mound just cracks, and I could feel like it's a lot of snow because it's like I'm surfing and it's piling up in front of me. It's probably like three, four feet deep, like in front of me. Luckily I had a lot of speed, so I was able to, to straight line and then jump over the, the, main, the, the face of it. Right. And then there was like a kind of like a little hump on the right, so I just peeled to the right. And as soon as I peeled, I'm like, okay, I'm, I know I'm good. Right. But the heli was sitting right underneath it. Like it was a sketchy spot to be. And so first thing I look back and I'm like, oh my God, because it was kind of spring, so there was, snow chunks probably the size of a car yeah like it wasn't powder it was right. just like these giant yeah. chunks like if that hit you yeah you, you yeah. just you know you yeah. wouldn't have a chance because right. you would just it's a guy from and the they're impact. and they're solid ice yeah. yeah so i peeled off and i'm like oh my god and the next thing i'm like oh my that's going straight to the helicopter yeah, yeah. and that's like pilot Leyland, mikey like the whole crew and i'm just watching and it's like this thing it's just a cloud probably like 50 feet you know tall the whole snow cloud yeah and uh it the whole like from my perspective the whole like the hell everything disappeared like, i couldn't see so I, I didn't know like what was going on right and uh yeah it was it was really scary but luckily like the the whole avalanche just kind of peeled right in front of the heli like kind of kind of follow the contour yeah. you know and uh it probably went like 20 feet from in front of him just like <sighs> oh my god but that was uh I think, and, and that to me was like, okay, like, I'm, I'm down. Yeah, yeah. You're like, well, <laughs> like, no more. See you guys. And I, I just sent a photo uh, to Mikey after that. I, I rode my, uh, my truck to Toyota and just drove off with Prius. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I sent a photo to Mikey, like, this is it. That's and, it. And, and a lot of these guys didn't know that I was going to retire. And yeah, I was just like, oh, shit. Like, what? Wow. What's happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was... It's scary. And then obviously I had a lot of, uh, you know, just close calls, like rocks and things. Like yeah. I would some, somehow, like you always dodge them. But, mm -hmm. and I think it's like over a course of like, you know, 20 year career, like you feel like you can only dodge so many bullets. bullets and yeah. after a while, like you, your numbers are kind of getting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I feel very fortunate, you know, I'm, healthy I don't have anything anything major um, I mean I've had five ankle surgeries and yeah you know things that I had to have to manage but yeah. nothing is gonna stop me doing anything so awesome cool <laughs> James West uh, with the massive progression in our sport right now where do we go next is it gonna be more spins and flips or technique and style 
Um, yeah, I mean, you know, everybody keeps oh, you, every year. I mean, I remember when there was Switchback Nines. Everyone yeah. was saying like, "Well, we can't do Switchback Tens. Yeah. Like, no one's gonna do a Switchback Ten. Yeah, you know. And then when the Tens all happened, everyone's like, "We're not going farther than Ten. Yeah, that's it. And now it's like we're at quad corks, yeah. and everyone's like, "Well, it can't go any further." But yeah, I I feel like it's it's just like a different disciplines almost like that's just how it's gonna go like it's you have your your contest like slope style big air whatever like that's becoming like you know its own kind of discipline yeah like tricks is gonna go crazy yep you know in my opinion i'm not sure how much that is snowboarding but it is and it's impressive what people do yep um i think that there's always going to be that progression but then there's the whole side of like it's almost like where skateboarding was. Like skateboarding was like gnarly handrails and like yeah. big gaps. But now you look at skateboarding is more tech. like fun, tech, Legi. more creative. Yeah. And you see that coming in snowboarding now. It's like, you know, people doing really cool. It's, it's fun to watch, yeah. you know? So I think it's like just different, different categories. But I think it's like, I think the tri tricks is going to keep involving crazy and crazier in the, the contest scene. Yeah. 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 I, okay. And, uh, yeah. Um, but I, I definitely like the, the whole creative part of snowboarding. That's kind of what snowboarding was to me when I grew up. It's like always kind of trying to take you from skateboarding, you know, like, yeah. you know, what can you do with the little space or just whatever you, you're handed to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So the questions are piling up. We got, this is awesome because, you know, so it, it really depends on how many questions we get. So. Let's try to fire through all of your questions. So just give like, let's just quick. do like qu quick answers and try just okay. to see if we can answer everybody's questions. Um, Sean McManus, how can the public get involved with protecting uh, where we play? Um, so that's our new nonprofit. Okay. Um, really, really excited. Good question. Um, yeah. So it's the website's going to be protectingwhereweplay.org. Uh, we'll be putting water stations in public places, places okay. where we play. Yep. Um, so we're, we're just, uh, relaunching the whole, whole, whole nonprofit. Okay. So it's probably going to be in about a month. We're going to have everything on the side okay. and, uh, there's going to be a lot of different ways to participate. Um, cool. so yeah, so very, very, very exciting. Yeah. In about a month you can go to the site. Yeah. The public can yeah. help out. Yeah. we play.org. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Wait, say that again. Protecting where we play dot org. <laughs> okay. Uh, Joseph Rapoli. Why, as a professional snowboarder and father, do you not wear a helmet? Ooh, <laughs> just digging in there. Yeah, I mean, that was just like, I think it's, I never, I never grew up wearing helmets. Yep. We, when we grew up skating, we yep. didn't have, there was no helmets, yep. you know, and, and, and just that, I, I remember when X Games had it first year, like, you have to wear a helmet, and it was just like, I just didn't feel like. Comfortable or comfortable. Yeah, I just yep. didn't feel like free, like, I didn't feel like. That's like myself. Like yeah. I have this thing bouncing around my head. And yeah. Like I, yeah. And and I don't. I'm not saying by any means it's the right thing. I think everybody should wear helmets. But I think that was just the the era that we came from. Yeah. And just never really quite. Yeah. Felt comfortable with. <laughs> yeah. No, I I agree. Um, yeah. uh, again, not. But not, you know, not, it's a good thing. Yeah. To wear helmets. But uh, but I think it's like now it's it's kind of like helmets are just standard. Right. Deal, yeah. Which, which is, is awesome. really cool. Yeah. Like it's yeah. not like. Oh, you're the helmet guy. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's cool that it's it has got to that. Yeah, absolutely. Jared Bronson, where do you get your drive for snowboarding, or maybe where did you get it when you were hitting all the the big crazy stuff? And um, that's a good question. I think it's for me. I noticed that every year, like you kind of have to have some sort of vision what you want. Yeah. Like out of the year, like you yeah. going into the season, you're like, oh, this year, like I just want to do like some creative stuff or double lines yeah. or butters or whatever it is. It's yeah. like, like if I didn't have that plan, I felt like I was just kind of bouncing around, not really going after certain things. Yep. So just kind of having like a vision. Yeah. And then that would kind of like motivate you. And, and once you're out there, you would look at those specific spots like, oh yeah, I want to do the double lines. Like, you, oh, that's all you look for, you know? Yeah. So yeah, just just switching it up. I think it's if you just keep doing the same thing, you're gonna you're just gonna get bored. Like you gotta you gotta just think outside the box and just try to push yourself one way or another. Awesome. 
Uh, oh, Pierre Wickbird. Uh, Pierre is Hello, one, Pierre. You know, Pierre, he, he was the, the main guy for uh, Robot Food. Uh, top three video parts and top three influencers. Uh, we got in top three influencers already. That was Terrier, Devin, and Peter. Right. Ingemar. Yeah. Oh, Ingemar. Yeah. My bad. T- Terry is in there, too. Terry. <laughs> we'll put Terry in there. Uh, yeah. Okay. He'll yeah. Yeah. Ingemar, Peter, and um, uh, Devin. But, yeah. Uh, oh, I, uh, yeah. Side note, Pierre was texting me today. He's buying, <laughs> buying furniture for his new apartment in New York, and he was going to buy a stump. A yeah. stump. A log stump, and it was two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> and he's like, "Should I buy this stump?" And I was like, "No, you need that's it, Pierre. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Buy a chainsaw. You could have a million stumps." Um, but he was right. He's he, yeah. he he knew it was a dumb move. But uh, yeah. but that's a good thing. Top three favorite video parts. Um, Meltdown Project. Okay. Ingmar Bachman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rowan Rogers part. I think which which was that? Pierre, maybe you can help. <laughs> <laughs> Rowan Rogers. Uh, I think he was, uh, it was, a, was it Heart, Heart, Hunger, and Homeless? Yeah. Mac, Ole, Mac Dog? Yep. Yeah, Rowan, that was just like, to me, that was like, just the eye opener. Yeah. Like, he was doing switchback fives, and I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, like, this guy's insane. Yeah. Uh, and then, pretty much every single Peter Lines part. <laughs> Peter Lines. Yeah. Um, J.G. Gernt. Um, oh, J.G. J.G. Um, what was the name of the Lamar board that you uh, used to ride in the pipe back in the day? <laughs> it was it was my pro model, but it was probably oh. one of the worst boards ever made in the history of snowboarding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, it was like uh, it was so soft, and uh, I remember being in the first X Games in the East Coast, and uh, I didn't really like the course, so I was like, oh, I gotta I gotta do something different here, yeah. so. I decided to skip half the half the slope and hit the border cross course into the so there was like this gap, you know. Yeah. And I remember going so fast, and I'm like looking at my snowboard, and it's like just like, <laughs> I'm like oh my god, is he gonna make it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so after that, JG is the kind of like the visionary of all the burden snowboards. Uh, okay. So okay. he's uh, OG. Yeah. Shaper. Cool. Yeah. Um. Well, actually, well, on to the next subject. Ryan Ford, what's the favorite snowboard that you've ever ridden? And, um, and what's the current board that you're riding? I think, I mean, it was when, so 2001, I uh, got my first pro model. Mm-hmm. Was, I was working with JG. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think it was, like, just the opportunity to, like, do anything you want, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, so that was that was my favorite board at the time because it was like finally like yeah. I can get anything I want yeah. all those things that yeah. you know the, always yeah. wish for and when I grew up somewhere I never had money so I always wrote bad boards and mm-hmm. and then I would ride anything I would get a discount on or whatever so yeah. so I finally got my proper sled amazing <laughs> uh, Mark Sullivan uh, where is the best place that you have ever ridden best place um Oh man, it's there's there's so many. Um, I I like riding in Europe because mm-hmm. you just it's so big and and um, there's so much train and and uh, like we're in somewhere it's like three years ago and it's just like you can get lost and find insane train and yeah yeah I I, I love riding in Europe um, anywhere and then. Um, and obviously, like, Alaska was very special. Yeah. Like, that was probably, like, the, the most memorable rides. But but I just remember being terrified the whole time, so. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, your robot food parts were awesome. Spencer Rowe, uh, the butters before the takeoffs were rad. Uh, who did you, you see first do that? Did you see anybody do that? Like, I, Yeah, it was, like, the, like, Joan Cardiel and, like, uh, um, like Mike Rangood and and all those like the early like yeah it was like so they were doing that like yeah like Noel Salasnack it was like like late you know early nineties yeah that whole era yeah yeah and that was just that just always stayed with me yeah it was just cool okay uh, Sean Tidor what influenced you to what's do up, the butter, the butters, but well, I guess we just answered that. Uh, what's up, Sean? Uh, Sean Tito, always an advocate watcher. 
of uh, this. Um, let's see, uh, what setup do you ride right now, Sam McCormick? What board? What board do you ride right now? Where you um, shred at the mountain? Yeah, so I I have a bunch of burn boards, um, which I love. Um, and then uh, I was riding Gentem uh, in Japan, mm -hmm. and absolutely loved them. Yeah, it was really fun. It was. Yeah. It was something that I haven't really ridden yeah. before, so it's just kind of open up, like way of my riding. Yeah, that was really fun. But yeah, just burden and and I definitely want to you know Gentems are cool. They're really fun. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Do you have a favorite trick, Kevin Wilson? Favorite trick? Um, I always loved uh, like switchback one eighties no grab. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just super floaty. Yeah. Yeah, I love I think those. you got those ones all wrong. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Paul Venderheiden, can we please see a Robot Food reunion video? I know. That it's would been, be pretty it's, cool. It's been coming up a lot. Yeah. Ooh, that would be cool. Yeah, I think, I think we've got to do it. I think it's, I think it's time, but it's just like so, we've, we've talked about it a lot, and yeah. everybody's doing like such of different things, you know what and you which, is, which is amazing because it's like I think the last email chain we had, and and you look at the email, it's like, Villa is killing it, obviously you had his yeah. thing, it's like roasting coffee, Benedict is crushing it, doing his thing in yeah. Europe, and everybody's doing really well what they're doing, but it's just, we're just kind of all over the place. And, yeah. But maybe you guys we, could we do, like, do maybe you could do just one week somewhere, yeah. like, yeah, try definitely. to get everybody together for to one it. week, whether it's in, like, the US or Europe or something, and be like, yeah. okay, we're all going to do a vacation for this one week, and we're just going to film. And, and it'd be rad to go, like, some of those places that we went to. Yeah. You know, like the Cook City, like we kind of, yeah. like, that was the spot at yeah. the time. Or like those mine or shafts. Or Yeah, like, exactly. That was, uh, yeah. was that Smiley Creek? Yeah. 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 Um, so that's, that's a good call. Um, actually, on the same topic, Evan Francis Litzwas, um, did you guys, well, in short, did you guys realize the impact that you were going to have on snowboarding when you were filming Robot Food? Like, you know? Yeah, you know, no, we didn't. But I think it was... Um, so from filming with standard films, um, that was, that was the area of its own. It was incredible. Yeah. Like that was like, it taught me a lot about like how to, how to go filming, how, how to get things done. Yeah. Um, but I think like it was sort of controlled in a certain way. Um, and our group was like, we're, we're a bunch of, there was a lot of creative guys like Travis and David and yeah. like, we felt like we wanted to like we want to do something different, right. you know, something that it's more tangible to like a normal rider. It's something that I would enjoy watching. Yep. And so that's kind of where the idea came from. And, and we, we had really no like particular plan around it. Mm -hmm. It was just like, Hey, like, let's just do this. Let's do what we want to do and let's have fun. And, and I think one of the key things for, for that is, was cause we always traveled as a group. Yep. Like wherever we went, like he was a whole crew, and then we might have split it in two different crews, but it was just like after the day, like we hung out with the whole group of ten dudes. Yeah. So just like I think that that really breeds yeah. through, because now it's like you filming, it's it's like such a small group, and yeah. you're just doing your thing, and it's yeah. it's not really like yeah, a, it's like at the end of the, yeah. at the premiere, you're like meeting people who are in <laughs> yeah. the video. You're yeah. like, oh hi, nice to meet yeah. you. Oh, you yeah. have uh, the second part. Oh, cool, I have third part. Oh, nice <laughs> to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I think we're wrapping up. This has ended up being amazing. We had so many questions. Um, real quick, though, I mean, so, yeah, so now you're doing Mizu full time. And um, uh, what is your kind of, I mean, this started as a passion project uh, to just make less people use plastic bottles, which is really mm -hmm. great. And now it's turned into a full time business and company. And, yeah. and um, what's, you know, your daily role there? Um, yeah, so I, I do like marketing, branding, but you know, I'm involved with a lot of things, but you know, we're growing, so we have specific roles for each category. Yep. So I work with, with, with product and obviously with my partner, Tim, just kind of like where we want to be in the future. And then day to day is more branding, marketing. Yep. Um, I do a lot of our photography now too, which I love. <coughs> um, but yeah, it's pretty neat to, to see how it's growing. It's like from our mission to be able to do products that can relate to more everyday life too. So we have um, cutlery sets, you know, reducing. Oh, I know. The, I saw yeah, those. Those so, are really cool. And like cups, we have wine cups and coffee cups. And just anywhere, 
anywhere you can reduce single-use plastic because it's it's once you live in in the space where we are like yeah. you're really aware like how many billions of bottles like you know 40 billion bottles end up in a landfill it's like it's it's huge yeah. and you look at like plastic cutlery like people just throw them left and right and you don't think because it just disappears yeah yeah but but so we're that's that's our core mission is to really have an impact on that and yeah we're having we're having a ton of fun and we finally like kind of reached a tipping point that we can finally do things that you know properly and right. like that book that you've been sitting on for so long like we can look at like oh like this product like we can finally like do that dive into it and yeah. And then having the own nonprofit, which we we donate one percent of the sales yep. into protecting what we play, and and so that's going to be a big project, and that's kind of like going to be my leading role as well. Okay. So wearing a lot of different hats. Cool. That's amazing. <laughs> but uh, it's been incredible learning experience, and being very lucky to have really amazing crew learning learning from them and yep. and it's i mean when i started like we were just laughing with tim too it's like like i never had like microsoft office on my computer it's like I started doing excel shoots it's like yeah. oh like, like this is how you do it i'm like i don't know i mean like double corks it's they look, <laughs> those are pretty easy too I'm like well why don't you just do that <laughs> right yeah exactly man that's awesome but yeah. but just like diving into it just like and it's you know it was inspiring to see villa's whole story same thing it's like yeah you know, having that passion and then just, you know, transferring that into a uh, business. Yep. It's, it's really cool. So, um, awesome. Yeah. Well, um, obviously if you want to learn more about Mizu or, or protecting where we play, you can go yeah. to Mizu.com and then Mizulife.com and, Mizu and uh, at Mizu life. We're, uh, on the social. Okay. And then also, um, we're going to have some Transworld snowboarding slash Mizu, uh, collab bottles. They're going to be for sale on the Transworld site as well. Um, and as well as this sh <laughs> kick-ass shirt that I'm wearing, that'll be for sale on the Transworld site. Um, coming up pretty soon, twsnow.com. And also, um, I just got this note on the computer here. Um, if, you, if you're stoked on these live videos on the Eddie's wall, up in the, this corner of your computer screen, if I'm doing that right, because it's all backwards, you know, uh, up in that corner, um, click to uh, turn on live notifications. So you're not gonna get a million notifications a day, but you will get the live notification when we're going live uh, on Transworld. So um, it's just a good way for you guys to know that uh, to, to, <laughs> to, to join into the conversation and ask amazing snowboarders like UC Oxenden some questions. So, uh, I mean, I think that's it. UC, yeah, thank you so much. Me. Yeah, I mean, it was really fun. And thank you guys yeah. for watching. Um, thank, I mean, your questions you. are what made this interview. <laughs> we really appreciate this. And lastly, before you leave, what every guest on the show has to do is Sign oh, yeah. the wall behind you. Let me shake up the marker for you. And uh, again, thanks, cool. UC. Yeah, thank true you. snowboard. Uh, inspiration. Likewise. <laughs> life, life, life inspiration. <laughs> <laughs>